So you wanna know the truth about high ticket sales and how you're doing it wrong. Well, the truth is most people aren't making great money and those that are struggle with consistency. And in this video, I'm gonna explain all the mistakes that I made that prevented me from making my first 100, 200, even $400,000 take home in this wild west industry that we like to call remote high ticket selling. And no, the gurus did not lie to you. It is possible to make a good income in this industry. And I would know because I have a business where I work with top producing closers from offers like Eman Godzi's education Kate, Andrew Tate's War Room in the Real World, Portfolio Companies at Acquisitions for Mosey, Seventh Level Media, Sales Sniper, Tana Chiser's team, Ecom offers, trading offers, you name it. The people I work with are the poster childs for that high ticket dream that you were most likely sold before you entered the industry. But the truth is, most of the problems stem from the strategy that people are taking to progress their career, not their actual sales ability. And believe it or not, there are plenty of dog closers that are making better money than trained killers simply because they had a better strategy. So let's hop into my iPad and I'll explain some of these to you. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have not only a better approach, but a more profitable way to approach the high ticket sales industry. And hopefully you can use this one day to get enough money to buy a nice Porsche GT3 RS, Rolex, and maybe move to a penthouse in Dubai. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing you need to master is how you're perceived. This doesn't just apply to job interviews, but it applies quite literally to everything. There's a really good quote by Jordan Belfort called being sharp as a tack and wrapping your package. And these are two things that you must do always. Most businesses in the info niche truly are akin to startups and they are ruthlessly competitive. And the top producing closers are people who've been in this space for a while, well, we know that. And usually the best offers or the best opportunities people get recruited to and you will never have a chance of finding your way into them unless you're actually skilled. So for those of you who are watching this that are brand new to the high ticket space coming from maybe a more established industry, well, you've pretty much just entered what I would say is the hunger games when it comes to opportunities and making money. So find yourself a sugar mommy, sugar daddy, or some rich sponsor to take care of you and you'll ramp yourself up nicely with all the tools and nice gear that you're gonna need to stand out from your competition. But first point is manage how you are perceived. You must always look like a professional on the field, off the field, get a good setup, get a white wall. The second thing that you have to master is developing, or the second mistake to avoid is not developing persistence. Now, this was something that I actually regret looking back on my career. I was the type of person that the minute that things would go good, I would bounce and go look for another offer. I've got a student right now, Jonathan, who closing for a company that sells uh, point of sale systems. This company is doing over 80 million a year, more or less in revenue. And it took him two months to be able to progress from just the middle of the pack closer to being number two on his team of a few dozen people. And he had asked me around the time that he was getting good if he should change into management or something else, to which I politely responded, absolutely not. Well, I, I didn't say it exactly like that, but I strongly advised him against it. And the reason being is because just about everything with enough effort will begin to compound. And so you must not stop when things are good. Wait for the tables to turn before you actually consider hopping into something new. Wait for boredom to set in. Don't just move off of the enthusiasm of feeling like you're good at something. It's like you're playing a video game and you've gotten really good at play, doing one game mode and you're starting to crush and win tons and tons of times. When you get good, don't then switch up game modes. Keep doing that, rank all the way up to the highest rank possible, and then go jump and do some other stuff. You'll be so much easier, you'll be way more respected when you're walking in as prestige master, as opposed to just the guy who happens to be miraculously good, but is like a level 20, you know what I mean? So wait for boredom to set in, don't move off enthusiasm. And even when boredom sets in, you should continue to push until there is nothing left. Recently, I've learned that probably just about everything worth having goes to those who are maybe 5% better than the next guy. If you think about the Olympics, the, different, the distance between third place and first place is not that big. However, the guy in first place gets all of the recognition, all of the rewards, even though he's training and working just as hard as the guy is third. So the thing to know is that motivation will get you started, but habits will get you going, develop persistence, and don't leave when things are starting to get good. The third point is that thinking that closing is a long-term play. Closing is short-term, selling is forever. Now, what I mean by this is that closing is really nothing more than a job. It's like you're becoming a professionally trained magician who is really good at doing card tricks. And if that's the case, then appointment setting is a lot like being the magician's assistant and they're pretty good at looking good, if you know what I mean. Now, innuendos aside, so, 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 so many salespeople continue to invest in their sales training to develop their skills because they don't actually know what to do next. You should only learn closing so that you can get good at knowing how to sell. And selling, by my definition, or by the dictionary definition, is nothing more than to persuade someone to the merits of. 
And now what that means is if you want to become a powerful person, you have to know how to get other people to do your bidding. Selling people loyalty, selling people into giving you loyalty, selling people into giving you authority, selling people into giving you resources that you can allocate like a sales team or a marketing budget or a funnel that you can design and optimize. Closing on info products or agency services allows you to get to really the knife's edge of persuasion because you're dealing with one call closes and you'll begin to master what it takes to get somebody to do something now. However, once you get good at that, then use those skills to go elsewhere. Don't just think that you're gonna be a closer forever. Now, mistake number four that you know really held me back was just fear of leaving my comfort zone. This was probably one of the biggest ones of them all. Now, closing when you get good at it will make you very comfortable, but there comes a point where you actually have to push and desire for more than just to be a closer. Like starting to build a brand for yourself and posting content, putting a face for your name out there on the internet, uh, starting to take on more responsibilities inside of your company or uh, beginning to learn marketing and funnels and getting very familiar and comfortable with tech such as CRMs, go high level, click funnels, things of that nature. I remember the last time that I left an offer when I was finally committed to doing my own thing, it was absolutely terrifying. I had despite you know, doing all this and being good at content, I, I had tons of fear. You will most likely run into imposter syndrome. That's what I ran into. You'll most likely want to go searching for another offer because it's familiar. You're used to being under the guise or under the responsibility of someone else. And this is something that I confront all the time with people who are looking to start what I call a fractional sales consultancy, where they begin to no longer close, but lead and develop the systems for remote businesses. And one of the biggest questions I constantly get asked is, do I have enough experience? You see, the thing is, the best closers know, and if you're a really good closer, you will know that almost everything in life and even in a sales call comes back to responsibility and accountability. And there will be a day, truthfully, when you get done with closing and you will just need to grab your balls and venture out on your own, trusting that you'll be able to provide enough value to sustain yourself. Instance of this, June, one of the members of FSC. June joined us when the management on his current offer pushed him over the edge. They decided to out of one of his paychecks and when you're a closer getting only 10% of the cash you collect well quite literally every dollar counts and I remember when he made his first $5,000 which at first he didn't feel like was much but the thing you have to understand if you've been closing for a while is that when you close for yourself 100% of that cash is yours every sale that you make is worth 10 times more to you when you own the business or own everything now, $5,000, it's not life-changing money, but the thing is $5,000 feels way different when you get to make it for yourself. Now, six months later, he's now at $30,000 a month. He's, June, forgive me for saying those numbers out loud, but last time I checked in with him in August, he did $30,000 take-home. So, and also, if you're curious to learn more about June's story, well, click somewhere around this video on our channel. Her interview is there. However, the point being is that you have to confront your comfort zone and begin to move out on your own. Maybe you get pushed there by bad management, or maybe you just have to move out there on your own, but you have to eventually get to that place. If I had done that sooner, I would have made very more. Now, the next point is going to be one around stability, thinking that stability is something you will ever find. And truthfully, stability is a myth. What you have to understand is that stability doesn't come from others. Stability comes from yourself. You must become a consistent person. You must tame yourself, tame your lifestyle and everything within it and truly become a master. The thing is, is you can accumulate a lot of cash quickly by just following the slow and steady path to get there and never deviating from it. Full transparency, it took me 21 years to put away my first $100,000 in cash. It took me five months to put away my second. That right there is what compounded growth looks like. And I'll be transparent, there are many moments where I wanted to buy things that I just didn't, or moments where I had experiences that I wanted to have that I just sacrificed and gave out on. And I still keep a very scarce mindset towards money and everything that I hold close to this day because one thing that I never lose sight of or that you can't lose sight of is that really everything is a gift and can be taken away from you at any time. And if you find yourself working for big companies, what you must realize is that the company is the person at top and everyone who leads those types of businesses are incredibly persistent. They're people who manage their perception how other people view them to be respected as an authority. They're people who leave their comfort zones regularly and people who decide to push themselves beyond just closing deals. And those are people who also did that for years and years and years on end. Understand that business is nothing more than the reflection of the guy up top. And so you must be honest and accepting that if you ever want that person to be you, that that person is you. 
And you have to understand that there comes a point when just you are the business and you are responsible for everything that you have. And there will be many unexpected events that will deter you, but you must cultivate an attitude of relentless optimism to continue to persist past them. Like recently, I've been restricted from advertising on Facebook. Facebook is the lifeblood of my business. It's where I get all my leads, but it's not going to deter me. It's not going to stop me. I've been cut out of deals and opportunities by people that I truly confided in and put a lot of effort and energy into, but not going to stop me just another bump in the road. And if there's one thing that I know for sure is that I am destined for greatness. And if you're watching this far, then most likely you believe that you are too. And so I encourage you to look within yourself and really ask yourself, are you showing up 100%? Because the truth is with high ticket sales, the thing that is wrong is the strategy and the mindset that people are taking and approaching to their life and their work, looking outside of themselves for answers that will never be there. You must fix the man before you can fix his future. I hope you found this video helpful. Take these to heart and get after it.